That teen would have been too young to buy that rifle if Governor Rick Scott's new gun proposal was on the books. He wants to raise the legal age for any gun purchase. Also, we will, we will require all individuals purchasing firearms to be 21 or older. Let me repeat, we will require all individuals purchasing firearms to be 21 or older. Governor Scott following through on a promise to address gun violence in our state, unveiling a half billion dollar three point plan today. Ted News reporter Eric Glasser is here to break it down for us. And Eric, the governor wants a lot of this done by the end of the legislative session, which is only a couple of weeks. And he wants a lot of it enacted before the beginning of the next school year. He's not wasting time. Very quick, Reggie. Yeah, the governor's words to students when he met with them over the last week was that change is coming and it will come fast. So, Governor Scott unveiling a three-point plan today that calls for changes in Florida's gun laws, school safety protocols, and our state's mental health system. Let's start with the guns. Governor Scott is calling for an all-new program called the Violent Threat Restraining Order. It would allow the court to prohibit violent or mentally ill people from purchasing or possessing a firearm if a family member, a welfare expert, or member of law enforcement files a sworn request and presents evidence of a threat. Anyone involuntarily committed under the Baker Act, meaning they're a threat to themselves or others, would be required to surrender all firearms and not have the right to purchase or possess those firearms until they go to court. And they would have to wait at least 60 days to do that. The governor wants to raise the age for purchasing any firearm in Florida, as you heard, to 21 or older, exceptions made only for the military and law enforcement. Also, no firearms for anyone with an injunction against them for stalking, cyber stalking, dating violence, sexual or domestic violence. And Scott also wants tougher criminal penalties for threats against schools and anyone who has or purchases a gun after they've been ordered not to have access to a firearm. Lastly, when it comes to guns, the governor also wants a complete ban on the purchase or sale of those bump stocks, Reggie. Boy, that's pretty sweeping right there. Now, the second part of the governor's plan had to do with school safety. That's going to require some really big money. Yes, $450 million in new spending. The governor wants at least one officer in every public school. Mandatory active shooter training and code red drills completed during the first week of each semester at all public schools. Also hardening campuses with metal detectors, bulletproof glass, steel doors, upgraded locks, and districts paying for those measures before any other capital spending. His plan also creates a new anonymous see something, say something tip line. That's for kids, grades K through 12, including a phone number, a website, a mobile app. Also a dedicated mental health counselor at every school, a threat assessment team at every school, and crisis intervention training for every school worker, all by the beginning of next school year. Finally, the third part of the governor's plan, Reggie, mm -hmm. $50 million for mental health initiatives. That money is for expanded mental health services for young people specifically counseling, crisis management. It requires every sheriff's office in the state to have a DCF worker, a case manager, in that sheriff's office department. That'll create 67 new employees to be hired by DCF by mid-July. And it provides matching grants so that sheriff's offices can create teams to work with DCF case managers. Half a billion dollars, though. I mean, how? in the world are we going to pay for all this? Enormous those? amount of money. Reggie, the governor says that Florida's economy is doing well right now, so the money is there. I also understand that I'm proposing a half a billion dollars for school safety and mental health initiatives. But let me be clear. There is nothing more important than the safety of our children. Our kids deserve nothing less. Fortunately, our economy is booming and we have the resources to protect our schools and our students. And if providing this funding means we won't be able to cut taxes this year, so be it. If we have to give up some of the projects we all hold near and dear, so be it. Wow. That is a lot to do it is. in a short period of time, Reggie. We're gonna see if state lawmakers take up the governor's challenge. I mean, it looks like a challenge too. And Eric, there was some discussion about an outright ban 
on assault style weapons, but he didn't go that far. He didn't do that. Now, when the governor was actually asked about that, he said that people have used fertilizer bombs. They've mm -hmm. used vehicles to kill large numbers of people. Keeping weapons out of the hands of law-abiding citizens, he says, is not the answer, but rather keeping those guns out of the hands of people who should not have them, Reggie. Eric, thanks so much. We've been uh, asking you all afternoon, what do you think about Governor Scott's school safety plan? Almost 100 of you have voted at WTSB.com, and we can see there the results. 3.5%, they agree with the governor's plan. Just keep voting throughout the newscast.